Well, so welcome everybody. And today I got a special guest on Executive Insights. It's Paul Almond. So Paul, before we get started, why don't you just introduce yourself to everybody and your company and what you do? Sure. Thanks, Kevin. My name is Paul Almond and I'm the Technical Director with Data Center UK. Uh, Data Center UK are a Schneider Elite Partner based in Manchester. We've been talking to different executives throughout this series. Something that uh, an observation I've come out with is a lot of the customers don't, the, one of the things they've learned through this pandemic is the server rooms are incredibly important. And, you know, in your observation, is this something that customers have been doing a good job with in the past? Um, I think, yeah, the, the have, they have been monitoring in the past, but certainly, um, you know, effective remote monitoring of the critical infrastructure has become increasingly important, um, especially where many offices or facilities have suddenly needed to become unmanned for long periods of time throughout the pandemic. So when they became unmanned, all of a sudden customers started realizing that maybe they weren't managing them as effectively as they thought they were. Is that is that a good summary of? Yeah, that's right. Presence. People get used to being able to pop in and out of rooms or buildings. Uh, and when that's not possible, then remote monitoring really comes into its own for them. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and, and I've had some discussions with people about not only the importance of remote monitor, monitoring and how that's changed, uh, because you know, the pandemic forced you to go unmanned, so it really highlighted some of the weaknesses. But I'm curious, you know, there's been a lot of discussions about different verticals. Maybe things are different for different areas. Is healthcare different than finance? Is it different than uh, uh, some other vertical? Or what's your take on that? We've seen a few differences between the verticals, but really it's affected everyone in very similar ways. It's a problem for, for most organizations, CIO or CTO, to come to grips or again to get to grips with what's gone on and and, and how the, how things have changed. So, so you've seen similar challenges, similar recommendations. Um, you know, has there been a change in kind of the types of software and solutions that people are giving, and and, and the, has there been a change in what you're recommending customers do versus maybe what you would have six months ago, nine months ago, twelve months ago? Well, there's certainly been the push the push for um, cloud and hybrid. Uh, so we, we, we're seeing a lot more as a service type solutions for our customers um, and also where we've been looking at products, um, product selection. It, we, the customers are wanting to know that out of the box monitoring and, alert and, monitoring and alerting is, is, is right up there with the must haves for anything they're choosing. And so you talk about remote monitoring, you know, the, again, I mean, we've been selling monitoring packages for, say, UPSs, or the basic equipment, but yeah. did, did the portfolio or the needs expand at all as you went through this uh, pandemic in terms of the types of things that customers wanted to monitor? Did it get broader in any way? Um, not really, I don't think. I say it's that the, the solutions have always been there for, uh, for, for different products, um, and it's, it's really making sure that where, where equipment has monitoring and alerting that actually it's set up that's something else we've seen uh, customers who thought they'd set everything up or looked after it themselves they may well have found that over the years um, people have gone in people have changed things and when they suddenly need to make sure it works uh, the day they come to look at it and find out they maybe find that it's it's not quite how they thought it was or how they want it to be so we've been working with a lot of our customers in making sure everything is running and uh, really is you know it's tipped up for them so making sure everything is running, but uh, you know, I assume you've also seen, uh, if things are unmanned, you've seen an uptick in the need for maybe more environmental monitoring and things like leak detection than maybe we would have been a year ago, that that becomes a bigger requirement. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. At the, at the start of the crisis, we had a very, um, quite a long warm spell. So temperature monitoring was, was taught to a few of our customers and cooling solutions. And then towards the end, um, we had sites affected by flash flooding. So then leak detection suddenly becomes the new hot point. So the, the customers are really looking at how, how they can have a, a broad range of monitored um, environmental and physical conditions. And so the, the solutions we're putting in for them is looked at everything from leak detection, temperature, humidity monitoring, and security with access and video recording. So that was unique to the UK, right? The heat, the heat and the flash flooding that started happening. Uh, in your view, though, are there any other geographic-specific things that occurred, or was it pretty consistent throughout Europe? From what I've seen, it's quite consistent throughout Europe. A number of our customers have uh, global organizations with offices across the world, and we look after um, many of their solutions. So we were seeing similar uh, problems around the place, Didn't, nothing specific to the UK or, I think, Europe. 
but um, many places had exactly the same problems. Yeah, just without the flooding and the heat wave, right? So, quite possibly. Quite possibly. <laughs> so, and so we, we, as we've been talking with some other people, there's been this uh, theme that's come out in some of our conversations about the uh, relationship with the customers. And in some cases that got strained, in some cases it got better. What's your impression of, uh, you know, what's been the impact of uh, the last nine months and the relationship you've had with your customers? Well, customer service has always been a, a major part of, of already the ethos of our organization. So keeping in touch with our customers, understanding um, what they're doing, looking forward to and what they want to be doing or what they need to be doing. So we've always had a very good relationship with our customers. Um, when the pandemic hit, uh, customers were comfortable just to give us a call or we were already talking to them. So really it was a case of, of business as usual in that respect, but certainly some of the requirements became more urgent. And so we were seeing a lot quicker turnaround on decisions for products where it might have been uh, months or weeks that was being done in days. So, yeah, we always had a very good relationship with our customers, but making sure that we're available for them has been key to, to getting everyone through this. Yeah, so this theme of compressed time of decisions that would take weeks, took days and implementations and acceleration. And if I understand you correctly, yeah. some of this is maybe accelerating to the cloud in certain applications. Yes, that, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Some of it's accelerated the cloud and, we've, and cloud deployments have increased. But again, on the hybrid solutions, um, those are also have been um, very popular with our customers. And so using parts of the cloud, but also um, some of their own kit in their own hybrid data centers. So using both together has, has given customers um, a lot of the functionality to grow and move forward that they need to. So I want to dive into that for a second. It's interesting you talk about, you know, the hybrid environment and what that might look like. Um, what, are, what are the applications or what are the things that you see your customers hanging on to on-prem? right versus what they're moving to the cloud is there a consistent theme is it just something where they want to keep it on-prem because it makes them feel better or is there actual a real business need there in, in your view well quite a few customers have got a, um, a significant investment in their infrastructure so they're not always as keen to move it straight to the cloud sometimes hybrid may be a stepping stone but you know cloud cloud's one of those things that people can't um control so you know, if there is a cloud outage and your whole your whole systems in the cloud, then that will affect them. So customers quite often will use parts of the cloud for applications, or they may well have bespoke applications or customer data that they want to hold on to locally. So that whole hybrid approach uh, works well for them. Maybe you can dive into a little bit. I didn't hear you talk about security there. So is there a perception that uh, there's a security risk moving to the cloud or is there a security risk staying on-prem? How do you give guidance to uh, customers on that topic? Security has always been a major concern for any customer looking to move to the cloud, but I think over the years, um, the cloud providers have, have made significant moves forward in that. When we're looking at on-prem security, um, again, this is something that customers are, are comfortable with, they understand it. So, it's it's easy for us to be able to work with them and assess their needs and ensure that they get the physical security right, which then gives them the the uh, ability to sort out their data security. Um, but moving wholly to the cloud, yep, yeah, some customers do want to do that and they're quite happy to do that. Others are maybe a little bit more cautious and just want to make sure they've got all their bases covered. Yeah, it's interesting because I've I've said before is that uh, physical security is the first step towards. Uh, cyber security and that without physical security, you really don't have it. Yeah. So, yeah. So Paul, we talked about a little bit about digital acceleration and you gave a, a few high level examples. I was wondering, you know, do you have any specific example of a customer or a project that happened as uh, that really kind of would give some details on digital acceleration? Um, yes, yeah, certainly one of our larger uh, data center provider customers um, had a growth program in place and um, buildings built, and they, but they've seen such a rise in, in take up of their space, they've actually accelerated um, additional building works to, to further cope with the, with the increasing customers. So they're seeing a growth in uh, organizations moving to the cloud or moving to a, to a hosted infrastructure, um, and that's really accelerated their own building plans and their own growth plans to be able to cope with that in the, what was going to be the medium to long term, but now has become short to medium term. Yeah, so long-term capital improvements actually became short-term capital improvement plans. 
Absolutely, yeah. Paul, so the topic of edge computing, I, I assume you've heard of this in this industry. We've been talking about edge computing quite a bit, and you know, and I've yet to have anybody give me a really good definition of it. So maybe you just talk about edge computing a little bit and what you're seeing, and then I want to hear your definition. Okay, well, yeah, edge has been around for quite a few years, and it, and it means that different things to different people. Um, but really what we're seeing is that for most customer edge, whether they realize it or not, is just as critical as their, their central data center. Uh, the kit in there needs power, it needs cooling, it needs monitoring, and, and just as importantly, it needs security. Um, for example, we have a couple of customers who uh, they have their new uh, HQ being um, designed and built, and Edge is a critical part of that installation or that design now. They're actually looking at the Edge, how each of those rooms is powered and protected. And we have another customer in manufacturing, and Edge now really is, is important for their data collection, and they're running IoT systems in there. So for them, Edge is critical because it brings back the live data back from their equipment, which helps them know exactly where everything is in the manufacturing process. Yeah, so in some ways, is it safe to say that maybe what we consider server rooms and wiring closets, we use those types of words in the past, now are kind of turning into micro data centers or edge computing environments. Is that, uh, do you see that definition holding yeah. up? Yeah, absolutely, definitely. So, well, as well as the, the micro data centers being on a, a, a whole other deployment within edge uh, solutions, but yeah, the, the data and the equipment in there is just as important. Yeah, so it's really about you know taking things and and the you know we used to treat the data center and manage it and had great controls over it and kind of ignored those arguably as an industry. So it's how do we get an appropriate level of management and solutions that bring it up closer to maybe the the criteria that we've what we call a data center. Is that a am I taking your is that a good interpretation? Yeah, understanding the importance um, and so for those customers who possibly neglected the importance of those those um, either the wiring closets or, or small server rooms, um, they quite often paid with with problems and issues which arose out of that. So now it is the customers are seeing it as a as an area that needs addressing. And I say that the, the security and the monitoring is as important as in the main data center. So I got one last question for you, I think, Paul, is, you know, okay. there's definitely a, you know, a sense of co companies are persevering, right, over the last year through this. And I'm just curious about, what do you think is the, the longer term impact with your customers and how is it going to change your relationship with them or kind of the softer side of things? What do you think is uh, maybe some implications we should all think about? Wow. Uh, I don't know. The customer for the future for some of our customers is going to be a long road. Um, for others, it's a chance to expand. We have, say, customers in different verticals. Um, one of our larger customers is an online retailer and for them, this pandemic has been a, a seen an explosion in their business and so has accelerated some of their projects. For other customers uh, in perhaps in the building side, some of these larger projects have been put on hold. So they're finding it tougher. Really for us, it's just working with the customers to ensure the solutions we put forward are right for them uh, and certainly agile um, in that enables them to adapt to change when needed. So it's interesting. So in some ways, the customer's demand on you has gone up. Right. So how are you guys so, adjusting yeah. to that? Yeah. How are, you, how are you guys adjusting to that as a business? Yeah, well, for some, for some of our customers, it has. It's been a bit of a balancing act. So for some customers, we're seeing um, um, a higher requirement for our services and our support and our assistance. For those other customers uh, who've had to, who've taken a downturn in their business, we see we're speaking to them less for new projects. Uh, so really, we're just reassigning our time to those customers that that need to work with us now to, to move their own projects forward. And I know you guys have always been customer centric, but maybe even, you know, accelerating or refocusing, making becoming even more customer centric. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, thinking about how we can best assist our customers, keep an eye on what the markets are doing, what the products are doing, what new products are coming to market and how we may be able to assist our customers with those products or how it will assist their business. We've been talking about the ecosystem, and it sounds like you'd agree with us, is that, hey, we really need to think as an ecosystem, how do we operate differently and, and do it in a way uh, that brings the most value to our joint customers? Is that fair to say? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. And we're working well. The partnership with Schneider works very well in that. There's a, there's a good uh, breadth of products that are all working together to give the customer the best value uh, for their product selection. Well, that's great, Paul. That's, those are all the questions I had for today. Thanks again so much for uh, joining us on Executive Insights and uh, good luck as we continue to work on our business together.
Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you.